When setting up a new machine, it's important to calibrate your axes and verify that you are using the correct steps per unit. Steps per unit refers to the number of pulses that are sent to your motor driver in order to move it a single unit. For example, if you set your steps per unit value to 2000 for your x-axis, that means that Mach 4 will send 2000 pulses in order to move your machine one unit on that axis. Your units are dictated by the machine setup units you choose in the Mach general configuration menu. If you are using an incorrect value, you may find that your movements are inaccurate. A steps per unit number that is too high will move your machine beyond the commanded distance. On the flip side, if your steps per unit is set too low, your movements will fall short of where you want them to be. Identifying and correcting the issue takes some time, a bit of math, and a lot of measurement. To make the process easier, the steps per unit calculator was created and included in your Mach 4 wizards. I'm going to walk you through the steps you will take to calibrate your axes and offer you a few recommendations along the way. At this point, let's assume you've configured a profile and have motion from each of your motors. Make sure your e-stop button is operational and that your axes are following the right hand rule. Let's take a look at the wizard we're going to be using. Go to Wizard, select Wizard, scroll to the bottom, and choose Steps Per Unit Calculator Basic. In this first field, you're going to enter in the steps per unit value you are currently using. To find that, go to Configure, Control, Motors and select the motor you want to calibrate first on the right hand side. Your steps per unit or counts per unit is listed here. Now choose the distance you want to move your axis and how fast you want it to move, keeping in mind that you have to be able to measure the actual distance it moves. When you're ready and you're sure your machine will allow you to move that selected distance safely, click incremental move. Mach 4 will command the movement, you'll measure how far the selected axis moved, and then we'll enter that distance here. Now this is where you need to be careful. There are a lot of different ways to measure, and how accurate you are in your measurements has a direct impact on how accurate your machine will be. I'm going to start by moving my machine one inch and using that as a jumping off point to figure out the correct steps per unit for my machine. The best practice is to begin testing in the middle of your work envelope. This will give you a nice safe space to move around in. Once my machine stops moving, I can enter the distance moved in the wizard and hit recalculate. The wizard will give me a new steps per unit value to use. I like to copy this integer and use MDI to get back to my starting point, but that's totally optional. An important thing to remember though is that this wizard does not automatically update your steps per unit. You have to go back to the motors tab and change it. You'll also need to change the current steps per unit in the wizard to continue testing with this new value. Once all that is done, we can try again. Now if you forget to enable Mach 4, you'll get the error message you see here. Don't worry, just enable and then you can continue using the wizard. Now that looks spot on at 1 inch, so I'm going to test the steps per unit setting again at 5 inches. The idea is that we want our movements to be accurate in small increments and large ones. Now a small discrepancy at an inch or a few millimeters may not look like much, but that error would be multiplied over large distances if we left it alone. Since my x-axis was not able to move the full 5 inches at 10,101 steps per unit, we need to recalculate and start again. This process may seem a bit repetitive, but it's necessary if I want to have accurate movements and, eventually, accurate cuts. Again, I need to change my motor tuning and update the current steps per unit in the wizard itself. Now we moved one inch accurately, so let's go back to the starting point and try five. Perfect, I was able to move 5 inches accurately, but I want to be thorough, so let's test my steps per unit setting again at 10 inches. Now's a good time to mention, you can use this wizard to move in a negative direction as well. To do so, simply type your move distance as a negative value, then hit incremental move. Awesome, now that I've figured out my machine's correct steps per unit value, I won't need to change that value unless my hardware changes. It stays the same. Now if you're having too much fun testing your machine and you don't want to stop now, I would also recommend doing some repeatability testing. This test is done using the dial indicator as shown. The purpose of this test is to reveal any lost steps. 
I will use a series of MDI commands to move my axis one inch, pause, and then move back one inch, over and over. You can test over larger distances or repeat the movements as much as you want on your end. If the dial indicator does not return to its position, I'll know I'm losing steps and can make my adjustments from there. There you have it. Now you know how to use the Steps Per Unit Calculator Wizard to calibrate your axes. Stay safe and happy CNCing!